Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. I am Khaldun Azhari. I'm former president of this club and a member of the board now. And I have the honor to uh, welcome you today to the event. Uh, our guest speaker today, uh, we are proud to welcome Mr. Hiroaki Nakanishi. He is chairman of the Japan Business Federation, or Kidanrin, the most influential business lobby in Japan, as uh, described always by the media. Mr. Naganishi is head of also the most uh, uh, power, uh, for most important uh, one of the most important companies in Japan. It's Hitachi. Uh, he is well qualified to explain the blueprint of uh, the so-called Society Five. 0, creating the future. This is an initiative created by Kidanrin in November 2018, last year. Mr. Nagnishi will discuss where Japan stands in the digital transformation race and how it can stay upfront in areas ranging from city management to energy disaster control, food distribution, manufacturing, health, and finance. Uh, since uh, his appointment as chairman of Kidanrin in May, 2018, uh, Mr. Nagnishi has uh, been uh, serving simultaneously the, as the executive chairman of Hitachi, uh, the company that uh, might be translated in English as the Sunrise, as he explained to me in the ante room, which is very nice name for the future. Uh, it coincides with this uh, Society Five. In recent years, the company has been focusing on the social innovation business, aiming to create smart social infrastructure. Uh, based on control and information technologies. He will uh, chair the forthcoming Tokyo Summit of B20, the business uh, sector voice of the G20 uh, that will be held also in Japan soon, and deliver uh, its recommendations to the G20 Osaka Summit. Uh, uh, we are uh, hoping to hear more about this uh, in this press conference that will be conducted in English only. We are very lucky that Mr. Naganishi is uh, very uh, fluent in English and we will save time. The presentation will be for about 20 minutes and this will be followed by questions and answers. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Naganishi, Chairman of Kidani. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, azhari san <laughs> And uh, it's a great honor for me to ha have uh, such kind of the uh, big audience. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate of the uh, many the correspondents that c came to here to to sharing of the our concept and what uh, the major subject to seeking forth for uh, now, now Japan. I prepared of the some of the uh, show to you know that uh, materials here is also shown in. Uh, uh, the display, and uh, I'm now using those chat, and so the uh, please look at here. Well, uh, the first one is uh, currently is uh, very uncertainty is a uh, very clear words. The uncertainty that uh, we are uh, now start to use this term already that uh, ten years ago, but uh, every year the uncertainty is going uh, more and more. So the uh, that so many the unexpected uh, you know events like uh, Brexit and also America first and also that's a very sensitive total uh, uh, relationships between U.S. China, U.S. EU, and also uh, the China U.S. and and all of the Japan is uh, how to making a more appropriate positions. Uh, it's a very big issues. But uh, simultaneously, that uh, the very big waves of digital transformations, digital world is changing uh, all environment of the uh, uh, life, not only the business, but also so, so many the social issues included here. So really, we need uh, the somewhat different you know, style for the uh, the policy makings or some of the business strategy, those kind of the issues. But the simultaneously, the uh, other please next page, uh, the, the world is uh, facing uh, so uh, many the issues to be solved. The big, big you know, issue is uh, climate change. The uh, used to be uh, the you know many uh, the not so many people are worried about that. Uh, but uh, today, almost all the people are really worried about the big change of the climate. Except uh, the some big countries present, 
but as, uh, the, also that uh, this issue is uh, strictly related to the energy and uh, simultaneously that uh, the digitizations or the globalizations create of the uh, new uh, big, you know, that uh, the problems of the social structure that will also that affected of the terrorisms and the simultaneously digital uh, world is an uh, expand of the our communication capability simultaneously we uh, have to face the uh, very dark portion of the digital world the typical example the cyber security issues there used to be cyber security is a kind of the uh, games but the recent you know cyber security is really that uh, distracted destroy some of the uh, uh, facility of the in social infrastructure. That's a typical example. So how can we setting up the next stage of our humankind grow? That's a big, big issue. But now the, uh, those kind of the thinking, the many people's uh, sharing the, the United Nations, the clearly defined of the, what the future goals. That was uh, 2015. United Nations uh, decided the sustainable development goals. The United Nations are uh, setting up the uh, 17 the sustainable goal uh, goals, and uh, the very important point is how can you, you know approach of the SDGs. Nobody can deny it. The many people want to uh, eliminate of the the poverty and also that a uh, uh, very uh, comfortable life, uh, quality of life. But now so many, uh, the subject is uh, just a, uh, is a uh, uh, strictly related to the uh, all of the issues of the society has. So how can each of the uh, so, such a uh, sustainable development goal? That is a very clear approach. But currently, those are so complicated, the total world, Japan has a very unique position comparing with the previous years. The first one is a very stable political stability. Uh, just before that, we, have, uh, we had uh, every year different prime ministers. <laughs> but now, the prime minister Abe already that, uh, the continuous of the uh, prime minister position six years, and uh, he is uh, very aggressive to making uh, the foreign affairs, uh, the diplomatic activities. So the uh, the his uh, say is um, getting to be a very respected positions of the world. That is one of the point, and also that uh, Japan has a very much industrialized countries. And uh, at the time of the uh, internet spreading out, Japan has uh, some disadvantage because uh, Japanese language's population is uh, very small. So the other, the English or Chinese, uh, those two languages have uh, big, big populations. So the uh, the, the if the uh, you know internet world is only the communication through the uh, language, we have a uh, big disadvantage. But a recent you know, IoT, Internet of Things, machine to machine communications, machine to machine speaking. Which language? Yeah, machine language. So those kind of the, you know, the, the digital measurement or digital control, those area, that Japan has a very big advantage because of the, we have a long history of to, to make an automations on, the, on the various industries. That's a, one of the uh, techni technical background of, of the current Japan. And also, the recent you know, that uh, the various uh, economical agreement, f free trade agreement. <coughs> the first one is CPTPP, TTP. That, that is a very a great, uh, you know, the execution of the uh, PM Abe is, uh, is has a very strong initiative to setting up here. And also that uh, EU-Japan EPA, the last year we accomplished all those two great uh, trade-free agreement. It's a kind of the, uh, you know, that the front runner 
of the free trade open wo world. And also that uh, uh, the, at the early stage of the digital transformations, many people talk about uh, we are losing of the jobs because of the labels, AI. But recently in Japan, we are facing a very serious issues of degrees of population, which means that the degrees of the labor. We are facing of the uh, shortage of the labor, so we need to support of the machines to making uh, the productions or plannings and, and also so many the, you know, the, the, the big uh, jobs. So the, uh, you know, that we need to making a strong leaders of initiatives to, to making a very much an you know, open world and also that uh, is a kind of the uh, new digital transformation leaders. That is a very important position. So uh, the, this year, the 2019, we have a lot of the event to promote of those kind of the uh, activities. First one is this year, the Japan is a host country of the G20. G20 has uh, so many kind of the other uh, ministry meetings, ministers meetings, but uh, before that, Kedanen is, is uh, now taking a host of the uh, business summit, B20. Ja that is uh, uh, the 15th this month. The, that is a big, you know, that, uh, discussions already that we are now having. How to making an open, free world. And also the sum of the, uh, how to deal with the digital transformation. That means data, free flow of with trust. And so many other subjects to be discussed already. The, we are now preparing for the joint recommendations of B22, the G20, uh, the, the uh, political leaders. Well, the, as Harrison's uh, introduced of the Society 5.0, that is uh, original of the k -Daniel. No, no, no. <laughs> we have a very long history. The first, you know, the official uh, decision of the Society 5.0 already three years ago. That's uh, at that time, uh, Japanese government the cabinet decided of the 5.0 as the most important concept of the science technology uh, plan of the five years. Uh, at that time, I was a member of the uh, Council of Science and Technology and Innovation uh, for the uh, cabinet. So I was uh, fully engaged in making this kind of the concept. And then that is uh, science and technologies, uh, you know, that uh, directions. But now that we are now discussing those kind of the concepts, is to be making a clear economical growth. That was uh, uh, the future investment 2017 at first. That's uh, the cabinet, you know, the basic policy or leading concept of the. Uh, Jap Japanese economical structures, how to, but the future. Not simply of the you know, businesses, not only the profit seeking, but also that how to contribute to the society, to solving of the uh, various social issues. Let's go back to the, uh, you know, the concept of Society 5.0. This chart, why we called it the Society 5.0? The first one, the humankind, is just a starting of the hunting, and agriculture and industrial society that is just after the industrial revolutions then that we are now information society but now the next stage is not simply of the uh, IT affected is all of the you know physical cyber the co coincidence of the uh, the very strong tools to analyze of the what is happening right now, well, of what the future is. So, so those are, is a, the technology should be uh, utilized for the uh, real, the social issue solving. So that we so-called is a uh, uh, co-creations, co-creative society. The society 5.0 is on one, two, three, four, five. That's a background. And also that uh, in that case, 
we are really that uh, the big you know, change. The first one is the digital transformations, but also the those kind of the uh, new approach affected is uh, more diversified the value itself of the society to create of the new quality of life, how to making uh, the real happiness. So those kind of the issues can be discussed and to be realized. So not simply of the uh, problem solving, but also that the new value creation. That is a very important po uh, part of the, this concept. Why do we so-called it the value? The next chart shows uh, how, the, uh, how can we release all the various, you know, the, the bottleneck of the life. The very typical conceptual change is something like that. The first one is that the economical scale used to be the very much industrialized society. There is a big size, mass productions. Everybody used the same things. Those kind of mass productions, business environment. It's not uh, making the, the people's life is much more, you know, uh, the, the uh, usability of the, the various products. But the next stage is a uh, somewhat different. The more problem solving uh, value creation is the target for that. So we will be uh, free from the uh, volume value. It's a really more specific, di uh, the diversified uh, the value. <coughs> so there used to be the uniformity is a kind of the, uh, you know, the, the common rules. But now, more diversified products. Sometimes, uh, you know, that the industrial people so-called it uh, uh, mass customizations. How to adjust of the uh, lifestyle, the products and lifestyle, all those kind of things. And also those kind of concepts to create of the uh, much more decentralized society. The each communities and each Society has its own values and end the progress of that. And the simultaneously, the, the, such a society or community has to have a resilience. Uh, the recent, you know, that uh, various uh, the na natural disasters, and the, the, that's a typical example for that. But now, how to make a more society be uh, resilient? And that's a uh, overall sustainable environmental harmony is a kind of the goal of that. The, those are you know that the, the a somewhat different concept is to be developed through the various social activities based on the physical cyber world. That that's a real meanings of the digital transformations, not simply of the uh, how to create of the profit. <laughs> so. Uh, we are now uh, the struggling to setting up the, uh, the B20s host uh, the ob obligations that uh, the we are setting up the various items for that. The, the first one is that's uh, digital transformation. The many the, you know, data we can share and store a very typical example in some kind of the, you know, that uh, natural disasters or sudden heavy rains create of the, uh, the some destroy of the city part. At that times, we really need a very much integrated uh, information, which part is on, uh, under the ground, the water, gas, telecommunications, you know, or uh, transportation, how to recover it, what's the most appropriate approach to recover or setting up the next stage, all those kind of things. It's really the digital database or common data, very much integrated, uh, uh, the public you know, data is one of the big tools for that. That's a one of the typical example. And also the, those kind of the uh, new world, create of the new trade and investment way, the, the recent, uh, you know, the investment world strongly requested of the business side of the, 
environment and social and the government, ESG type of the investment. The all of the business uh, enterprise has to declare that we will contribute to such a environment and society and also that they know in order to do it we have to be, be keep a very good uh, governance of the corporate those kind of things is a second term and also energy is a very much you know uh, the climate change strictly related to it so that uh, how can find of the way of the uh, uh, plenty of life uh, plenty of the uh, you know comfortable environment to but now simultaneously we have to consider of the uh, various uh, climate changes and also the very high quality of the uh, infrastructure is required to setting up the uh, new smart cities that is another point and also right now Japan is tackling to the how to improve the working environment the future of works uh, Japan succeeded in the case of the early stage of the uh, industrial development. That is a big uh, uh, victory, but right now, those kind of the working style, no more feasible. How to improve the life, that is another big issue for us. And the number six is uh, health and well-being. It's a little bit in a vague word, but now, Japan is the most serious subject to, to be solved because of the uh, Japan is a very much you know, aged society uh, and so the, uh, the ve very rapid increase of health care uh, cost. Uh, looking at uh, some of the uh, government budget, all as a party is almost uh, even the, the several years. Only the health care portion is growing. That is a big problem for all of us, especially for younger people. The, because of the younger people has to support of the uh, aged people. So that's a, the, but now in this case, also digital, uh, the handlings of the health data, sometimes alarming of the uh, aged disease. The, 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 that's a very important point. And there are finally that uh, integrity is a very key, important keyword. Because of those, uh, you know, that uh, total view used to be, it's a very difficult for the, uh, everybody. But now, digital transformations uh, enabled us to look at the, uh, what is happening right now. Visibility, and how can setting up the, uh, the future planning of the integrated. Those are, are the real, you know, that our big challenge and also that we would like to discuss those items at the time of the B20. So, the, uh, today is a very appropriate location here. We will have the big, you know, the open to the press of the B20. Now, those are, you know, that uh, today is my explanations, but uh, simultaneously you, you already received of the, uh, this uh, very shortened uh, paper, uh, the Kedanen proposed of this type of the concept for the future of the Japan, not only uh, in two Japans, but also the wo global, global world. Society 5.0 co-creating the futures. The, uh, the, our proposal consists of, of the uh, two major parts, described here, the, the first page the digitalization uh, has to be uh, very much you know, contributed to the world, the very positive view of the digitalization. That's uh, uh, already I talked. But now, simultaneously, if we to approach of these directions, we need a lot of things to be done. That's the second pa part of the, uh, especially Japan. The first of all, the, we have to change all the our business style, reform of business sectors. That's a very important portion. And also the, uh, the all of the business uh, carried by the human beings or worker pe working people. <laughs> so we have to change of the individual lifestyle. 
That's a second part. And also that the public sector, Japanese government, has to be changed. And simultaneously, we really need to prepare for the very important fundamental part of the, the uh, uh, data and technologies, especially the how to share of the data. Uh, we are, recently that we are talking a lot about the, uh, the big winner uh, data gathering internet base of the business, big enterprises. As you know, that the GAFA uh, is an, uh, monopolizing of the all the data, but the how to manage it, and also the public data portion has to be open, integrated. Those are many, many things to be done. That's uh, our proposals, and so today uh, the is a very important point is that uh, this society pipe of zero is not simply of the business issue only. Uh, government, uh, public sectors, and the private sectors, and simultaneously the academisms. The, those three has to collaborate the very tightly to setting up the new stage of the Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank you, Sun, for your presentation. And we, we have the more, I think, uh, flyers for you, for your reference. They will be available. I would like to open the floor uh, to questions and answers. And please raise your hand, and I will point you first, Michael Penn, and Michio, and then you, and you. Please. Uh, Michael Penn of the Shingetsu News Agency. Thank you for coming. Uh, at the end of uh, January, uh, you visited Yumeshima and together with the governor and the mayor and you became the chairman of a new organization uh, called the Japan Association for the 2025 World Expo. My question for you is as specifically as you can, as concretely as you can, can you please tell me what role do you see K. Donren playing in the creation of the IR industry in Japan? What, what's, what part do you play uh, in Yumeshima if it's licensed and the other two locations around the country? The, uh, uh, the, the committee of the uh, Expo Kansai and Osaka has no responsibility for the uh, uh, IR development at all. <laughs> the simply of the Expo is uh, targeted for the, the to, to show the, the expected uh, in the result of the Society 5.0. So that today's uh, concept has to be shown up the, at the Expo Osaka. So, the, my, uh, the, the, the major missions to pushing of this concept, and uh, used to be uh, the expo, the all of the uh, you know that uh, pavilion is uh, uh, the supported by the some the big uh, business, but now in order to the uh, you know society five zero, uh, the to uh, the real you know the presentations. We really need a collaborative work because of one enterprise cannot uh, realize of the some the very specific new world of the society five zero, uh, picking up the uh, healthcare, the some of the uh, you know medical industries and pharmaceuticals and and also some of the various you know the the associations to be involved in the one pavilion. So those kinds of coordination that might be the my major missions. Uh, that answer to your questions? And the IR industry? IR industry, we don't have uh, the, such a kind of way. The, uh, the Japan has uh, very few IR industries. So, uh, honestly speaking, the, some of the uh, big you know, IR industries uh, try to contact with me that I don't have any idea yet right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Nakanoshi, thank you very much for your presentation. I'm Michio Ishida with Singapore's Channel News Asia. Uh, my question is on the um, future of energy um, 
in particular nuclear power. Um, next week we'll observe um, eight years since the Fukushima nuclear disaster. And there are many nuclear reactors up and running again, and um, some are set to run again. Um, I was wondering, um, how can you justify you know, all these nuclear uh, power plants, reactors running again, uh, when you know, there's uh, so much trouble decommissioning the Fukushima nuclear plant, and so much money going into uh, running nuclear power plants and the decommissioning. Um, and can you also um, give us your insight into um, what kind of technology is developed in um, or is advancing um, to improve um, the safety of nuclear power plants? Thank you. Thank you for your question. That uh, as for the uh, nuclear technology, we have uh, so many that uh, stories. Uh, the the the, mo the one of the, uh, the you know the question is that the why we uh, you know the, the pushing of the nuclear energy <laughs> that we have the two uh, the, uh, two answers. That the first one is that the short term view. The currently Japan still the uh, you know the, the fossil energy is the percentage is um, more than 80 percent and uh, that means that we are the huge uh, CO2 emissions right now. Uh, try to making uh, the, the rapid development of the uh, renewables the, but now the, uh, we cannot extend m more because of the uh, some of the structural grid issues T and D uh, transmission and distributions of the electricity. That is a very serious one. So without a nuclear current, you know, the, the sites, uh, the operations, we cannot uh, get out from the uh, such a high ratio of the fossil uh, energy source. That's a short term. And uh, long term, the, please imagine 100 years uh, later, the fossil energy will all have gone away. At that time, how to keep our the uh, uh, the quality of life QR? How to keep up the uh, uh, the various industrial activities? We really need another source, energy source. Of course, uh, how to making a more you know renewable or so natural uh, energy. However, the currently we don't have clear answer yet. So the, uh, we need uh, very much long times, not simply of the current, you know, that uh, the reactor technologies, how to utilize of the more, you know, the nuclear bases of the various uh, the energy source. That is uh, uh, the two reasons we clearly have. So the how to making a more the nuclear operations safer. That's a big, big issue. And uh, the, in the case of the uh, Fukushima, we have a very severe accident. And uh, the uh, decommissioning requires a very long time of the uh, tackling to the stabilize of the all of the nuclear uh, the, uh, phenomena. But now, we are uh, the very much confident to succeed of this type of process and also that uh, current Japanese <laughs> nuclear operations uh, is a really that very high level of the qualities of the from the viewpoint of the uh, safe operations that we, we have to do the, the, those kind of the activities continuously that's a big issue right to do that Mr. Chairman, my name is Richard Tushilo from Indonesian Journalist. Kaicho Hontoni, Ego Kakoi Disne. Sbarasi. Your English is very good. So I'm expecting a, actually uh, the press conference for foreign journalists in Kedanren, maybe two months, once in two months or whatever. So regarding the uh, Society 5, uh, I'm wondering because you already told us also this country is an uh, elderly country, very aging society, and maybe probably the average around 65 years, maybe, I don't know. 
So I wonder maybe uh, the people of Japan could follow very clearly this uh, Society 5.0. And uh, you also told us that the uh, uh, to cover this uh, uh, deficiency of human being is by using the robot and also AI. So <laughs> I don't know, this is prob probably could solve the problem or not, but uh, I would like to know your uh, vision about the incoming foreigners workers to Japan, because at least maybe 350,000 people uh, from foreign countries, including my country, from Indonesia, will come to Japan. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. So the foreign workers issue is a little bit complicated. The, uh, the some of the uh, you know that Japan has a very much an isolated environment, so many people has a big you know hesitation to accept of the uh, immigrants. Uh, that's uh, one of the uh, especially the refugees. The, that's uh, the basic you know the cultural issue. So that we need to making uh, the clear uh, the the you know the what the uh, foreign workers comes, what type of the works and those kind of the uh, the very fine management is required to do that. But anyway, that uh, we Japan can offer the various uh, working opportunities for the uh, various countries. That's the first uh, state uh, the uh, items. But now the, my view is uh, somewhat different because of the, I'm now talking about that Japanese environment is very much isolated, the very unified culture. That is a kind of the bottleneck for us. Uh, that because of the uh, current economy, not only the economy, the, some culture or sometimes uh, politics, uh, all of the things uh, is uh, very much globalized. That is a, the fact. So the, in that uh, total operations, Japanese culture has to be more diversified uh, mode. The, the many the foreign peoples come to Japan, enjoy the life, and also the simultaneously very uh, frank discussions. Uh, those uh, more open culture is uh, really that uh, important to the for the futures of Japan. That's uh, another view. Uh, the pers my personal opinion is that's the most important part of the uh, how to make the uh, foreign visitors uh, the staying uh, the very comfortable in Japan. Uh, of course, the uh, sometimes uh, not um, appropriate environment uh, to be created or those kinds of the worry that many people are thinking about that. But I believe it's a very important uh, step for the more diversified culture in Japan. Yes, Mr. Naganishi, my name is Patrick Welter with German newspaper Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung. I have two questions, if I may. You were just uh, singing the praise of openness and an open culture in Japan. You have the case of Carlos Ghosn, a foreign manager, 20 years working in Japan, quite successfully being just re maybe released today. But how do you judge this case? Is this a bad signal to foreign investors and foreign managers coming to Japan? Is this, yeah, is this damaging the image of Japan in foreign countries? And the second question related to that, there is the some people argue that this all is a conspiracy conspiracy by the Japanese government and Nissan to keep Nissan Japanese and not yeah, make it French. What is your opinion on that? Is this some kind of complot between <laughs> Nissan and the government or METI? Yeah, the issue of the um, Mr. Carlos Gong is a more, more complicated the totals. The, the uh, initial stage of the uh, Carlos Gong's the, the management to recover of the Nissan is a really great work. And uh, uh, Hitachi has a very close relation to the Nissan Motors. So uh, I met him so many times. <laughs> the, and he is a very excellent you know, the business leader to make a clear idea and a very quick decision makers. That is one of the fact. But uh, simultaneously that uh, he 
uh, the the stick uh, already the, the the position of the head of the lunar or Nissan very long time uh, might be a little bit too long that uh, <laughs> and and uh, nobody can you know that uh, change his positions to the other the excellent uh, you know the, the business leaders. That is a uh, kind of the history of the man, uh, humankind, <laughs> and uh, those kinds of the uh, affected of so many that the governance issues and what's the real compliance. Or I don't know what the uh, reality is, but now the uh, the current you know that the, the press release or some of the uh, various you know, newspapers describes a so complicated total situation. I don't have any clear idea yet. Of course, of the some of the uh, you know that the Japanese uh, uh, the systems were uh, the the uh, is not so appropriate or those kinds of things. I I, I know that those kinds of the uh, opinion is uh, very strong, but uh, simultaneously the uh, what the uh, the real view for the that problems of how to deal with the human rights or those kinds of things today I don't have clear. Uh, idea, either. <laughs> but now uh, it's uh, a very serious, uh, you know, the, the the events right now. Thank you, Daniel. By the way, he he was granted uh, bail, according to Reuters, so he will be released soon, according to news. Thank you. Hello, Daniel Hurst, freelance journalist. Thank you very much for coming today. Um, I just wanted to ask, you mentioned at the beginning about Brexit as one of the challenges um, at the moment. How concerned are you about the prospect of no deal? It's getting very close to the deadline for Brexit. Do you think that there should be a delay to Brexit to avoid any uncertainty? And lastly, what do you have the hope, what's, what are your hopes for the future trading relationship between Japan and the UK? What, what sort of shape should that um, trading relationship take? Thank you. Uh, the, the Brexit is also that uh, I was fully involved in that <laughs> at the time of the referendum, so uh, the, I was very shocked. The, uh, those kind of the uh, decisions by the people of the UK, and uh, so today I don't have a clear idea about that. Uh, what the other, you know, the 29th of the March. We already have the uh, the twenty four years, uh, four days only. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so, so the uh, simply strongly request of the UK government, the please avoid the uh, Brexit with no deal. <laughs> uh, from the viewpoint of the business operation itself, the Brexit no deal. What should we do? It's not so clear. Many things to be considered and setting up the various conditions. That's a really, the, honestly speaking, costly. <laughs> not simply the time, but also the monies and people. So please avoid the Brexit with no deal. And. Uh, I met uh, so many times of the uh, Prime, Prime Minister, Mrs. May. Uh, she is doing uh, the various you know, that, uh, actions uh, and uh, it's uh, very difficult uh, con conditions. Not simply of the negotiation between the EU and uh, UK. Uh, the Parliament, uh, how to deal with the Parliament is the most you know, difficult one right now. So I don't have clear suggestions to her at all. <laughs> yeah, that's a very difficult one from the viewpoint of the Japan. But simultaneously, UK is a very important uh, nation of, uh, the, of Japan. So we would like to support of the uh, UKs in any other stage of the uh, Brexit. 
Motos. Uh, Tokumoto Freelance for Japanese Magazine. Um, as you may know, Emperor Akihito will abdicate next month, marking the end of the Imperial Heisei era in post-war Japan. And in the last 30 years, uh, Emperor and Empress Michiko has been visited uh, other Asian countries, uh, China and Philippines and uh, Saipan, mm -hmm. and to pay respect to the war dead, not only Japanese, but also foreigners. And so my question is, uh, what kind of the positive influence did they give to the business community mm. for doing business overseas? How do you evaluate or how do you assess the activities of the emperor and empress in the Heisei era? And that's my first question. Mm -hmm. And second my question is, uh, uh, could you tell us your idea about the um, constitutional monarchy in general? Because in your presentation, you said um, Japan's advantage is a political stability. So could you tell us uh, if there's any, something to do with between um, political stability of Japan and uh, Japan's emperor system? Mm. Uh, as you know that the uh, emperor of Japan is a kind of the symbol of the nation. And uh, not the political, not the business oriented. It's a total culture base. Uh, that is a completely different way from the other countries. And, uh, and also that uh, very key point of the understanding of the Japan's total view of the Japan. And that's uh, the, you know, that, uh, very difficult explanation, but a very strong base for the uh, all of the activities of Japanese society. That's my understanding. So, the during the thirty years, the Akihito Emperor has uh, visited so many countries, and uh, not simply of the uh, war place. There's also that visited uh, many countries, and. Uh, uh, those activities uh, is really that uh, the supportive to make the uh, people's understandings of the what the, uh, the some base culture of the Japan. That's the most important part of the uh, contribution, not simply of the business, but also that uh, how to build up the new position of Japan in the world. Uh, that is my uh, you know the simply believe it. And uh, the, uh, the political stability, I first to touch on these issues, but uh, this is uh, quite uh, rare in Japan. <laughs> the recent, you know, that the, the before the Prime Minister Abe, almost 10 years, uh, every year we had uh, different Prime Ministers. That's all kind of the idea, you know, that how to change of their political systems in Japan. That's uh, another issue, it's completely different of the uh, current status uh, from the, uh, the emperor's positions. Uh, but now uh, we need to avoid of the, uh, the very short sight of the view of the, uh, the emperor positions. And so that's a kind of histories, not simply of the area you know, that uh, the thousand or, or two thousand years of Japan. Yes, please. Hi, I'm Walter Sim from the Straits Times of Singapore. Thank you so much for your presentation. Early on, you talked about Japan's technological age, but I mean, if you look at um, industries like telecommunications, 5G, you see Japan losing ground to China and South Korea. If you talk about AR, US and China, obviously the leaders now. So how, how, how would you say that Japan should reassert itself to catch up in these areas? And how should Japan stand out in an increasingly crowded market? Thank you. Yeah, there's a technology or some of the engineering capability, or those are you know, shifting very dynamically. It's quite natural. 
The Studio Japan is a very uh, strong advantage of the, uh, the, the industrial engineering field that I already mentioned. The how to gather the data and how to utilize the data to setting up the new productions or marketing or delivery or those uh, services oriented up, uh, issues. It's not only such kind of the fields, but still that we are keeping a very good position of the material science or uh, to the very much research oriented uh, industry. But now it's not a permanent, always changing a lot. That's uh, the more appropriate understandings of the current Japanese positions. So we need to invest continuously to the, uh, the, to the area of the science and technology area. The k Island is um, pushing very strongly to make uh, not simply public sector's investment, but also private sector's uh, R&D expenditures. Thank you. Yes. Sunil Chako, uh, Sunday Guardian, India. Mr. Nakanishi, can I take you back to the time in the 1970s when you were a young student at Stanford, when uh, Bill Gates was uh, basically a nobody and uh, was an entrepreneur. He himself, I heard, come, used to say, he used to come and do shabu shabu in Tokyo, looking for investment, looking for contracts. One manager, mid-level manager at NEC, Mr. Watanabe, who's still alive, uh, he gave him his first contract, a big contract that really established who he was. Similarly, since especially since Kedanren represents the largest companies and not and pilot projects in society 5.0 may not be so attractive to the largest companies. And being a computer expert, what could you do to recreate that environment of the 1970s where the entrepreneurs of Japan and indeed the world would come to Japan and would be supported. What structural mechanism could you create, uh, not just as a leader of Kedanren, but as a computer, one of the rare computer experts at the top of business in Japan? Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, you know that uh, the very much you know, honest speaking in Japan that uh, Japan is uh, the very much you know, uh, you know, behind of the uh, U.S. or India, <laughs> or from the viewpoint of the uh, new venture creations or en entrepreneurship, but I don't think so. That uh, some structure, uh, the difference exists. The current you know, that, uh, employment or so social atmosphere, the many the excellent uh, you know the young young people who want to be a member of the uh, big enterprise, big industry. So that uh, the right now, the big industry is uh, almost a monopolize of the, <laughs> the very aggressive the young peoples. Atmosphere is uh, changing a little bit, but uh, still they are keeping uh, the big you know, talent resources in the big industry. So the, uh, in case of Japan, the big enterprise has a big responsibility to making the encouraging them to making new business opportunity. One of the uh, you know point of the uh, the pointed out in this uh, you know the proposal, we should we pushing of the uh, big in, ca in case of Japan to create of the uh, the venture ecosystems, the we big industry has to clear define of the uh, Dejima type of the operation. Dejima is just uh, at the uh, Edo era, the only one place which can be free from the, the government uh, control. Those type uh, is a very important to making the, the very aggressive young excellent peoples to challenge of the new business opportunity. But that's uh, one of the idea. But now the the uh, current uh, ja Japanese uh, venture ecosystem is not uh, working well, so that uh, we are trying to so many the you know that uh, opportunities to make it happen. Kedan as well. Yes. I'm 
Minatsuki Shinozaki from NHK. Uh, today, uh, some Japanese newspapers say there are some problems related to foreign trade needs in Hitachi. So uh, I want to, as, as a chairman of Hitachi, uh, would you give us your, com uh, your comment on that? And uh, already you mentioned a little bit uh, already, but uh, what should the Japanese society do for accepting on foreign people? Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I'm very much surprised of today's Asahi, <laughs> the, the top page of the news. I didn't know that such an in detail. Some portions I recognized it, of course. So the, uh, you know that uh, uh, the I just uh, arrived of the uh, companies uh, to listen to the what is happening, but uh, detailed n not yet uh, to me that. Uh, the, some problems of the, uh, the you know current you know, the training programs, not simply of the uh, immigration uh, pro process. So that's a big big uh, you know, subject uh, for the, uh, the already I talked about uh, the Japan should have a more diversified uh, the working environment. Uh, the, so many the preparations are required to setting up that those uh, issues. Not simply of the uh, the government process, but also that some the private sectors has to have a very clear view for that. That's uh, current, you know, the fact shows here uh, our preparation is not enough yet. Thank you. Please make it very short. Very short. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hiroki Krista, a freelance writer. Uh, my concern is the income level of Japanese workers. It hasn't changed for the past two decades. Can you include the income level growth in the Society 5.0 for sustainable development? <laughs> the, this uh, you know, the issue it's a very much a complicated <laughs> issue. <laughs> Not a simply average income levels. Is uh, Japan has to change of their Japanese style lifetime uh, employment and uh, and also that some you know the, the, the same very much you know, equal uh, almost equal the the compensation levels. That we need to making a you know not simply of the uh, labor issues, how to making a the more you know encourage the people to uh, to work uh, the the more you know create cre creatively. Those are uh, working environment issues will solve the uh, the the current you know that the the co uh, co compensation level of the Japanese working peoples. It's a not simple issue. <laughs> so today I don't have any simple answer to your questions. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Nagashi, you mentioned that uh, the biggest disadvantage for Japan is uh, the language. And I think today you provided very good solution to that by speaking English for the whole <laughs> press conference. We saved a lot of time uh, in uh, translation. And uh, for that and for you coming, I would like to present you with one year honorary membership in our club. Uh, we are now in a new location in prestigious Maronochi and we like uh, to ex exchange more business with uh, coverage with your uh, company. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen. Please remain seated uh, while our guest leaves and please uh, no message exchange. Thank you.